guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and I have a floss tube for you today. And I'm coming to you from a little different location. I'm in my office. This is my crafty table. But I wanted to talk to you real quick before I get into all my crafty business about a lamp that I was sent for review. I've seen other floss tubers review it as well. It is the Ben Q light. And I just want to give you a quick overview of it. Now for a transparency, this was sent to me for review. I did not pay for it, um, but the opinions are my own. So I got this lamp. Guys, I love it. I love this lamp. So what I'm going to do is give you a little rundown. First of all, here it is. Um, it has a real nice heavy base. It does um, adjust completely, so that gets adjusted. This can come, it comes this way, like that. So it's a great task lighting. Um, I could use this to cross stitch if it had a magnifier. Just saying, Ben Q, but it doesn't. Now, this here is the shape. This U shape, I think, gives you better direct um, control and task lighting. If you notice, it does touch to turn on. And then this is little thing that gives you all these different colors. So it goes from a real warm light to a bright white, which I love because if you can tell the different color of light, does something and changes the color of your fabric. So I prefer, personally, a nice bright white. Um, and like I said, it has really good direct task lighting for whatever project, and it has a super low profile. So I love it. Um, I know they come in different colors. I got the gold. And then on the back here, which I also like, when you put it together, a little bit of detail is the cord is up here, but it snaps in and then it hangs out and it's a super long cord so that you can use it at different places that you're working. So that is my review of the BenQ lamp and I really enjoy it. So I'm, I'm glad to have it in my crafty space because this is gonna help when I do videos. Okay, now we are gonna talk about cross stitch and knitting. We'll start with cross stitch. And I had some questions about what these are. I think I've showed them before, but these are called Smart Cool. They're technically for cables, to wrap your cables and stuff, but this is a strong enough magnet that I use it on my cross stitching to hold the fabric out of my way. There is a link to my Amazon store down below. It is an affiliate link, but these are in under my cross stitching supplies. And the brand is Smart Cool. Cool. So I grabbed those. All right, so we're going to start with our cross stitching. I got my handy dandy notebook, which I need to update. I think I'm missing some stuff in here. I mean, I've showed this before. I just write down different things that I've been working on. I don't know where that is. Hmm. Might be done. I'm not sure. Oh, I think that is done. I don't know. Lori, get your life together. Oops. Okay. So I didn't really work on a lot because I was on vacation. Um, but I did work on, I took it out of the, the um, Q-snap so you can see how big this is going to be. So this is a temperature chart. I started in January each shelf represents a different month and each book represents a different day and the high temperature of that day. Now they do come with a color scheme, but I just made my own. And literally I just said, oh, this day, this color, this day, this, this temperature, this temperature, this temperature. Cause I wanted to go with a little bit of randomness. Here, I'll show you real up close. And then there's little doodads and I didn't do anything the right color that she says. I just made my own. So I have one more day left in July and then I need to catch up August. And then I just have August, September, October, November, December. So this would be August, September, October, November, December. 
down here. And then I just have to finish the bottom of the frame. So I'm not doing too terribly bad. And this is the back of my work. I know people have asked questions about that as well. Um, I don't think I do anything different than anybody else. I just like to bury my extra threads, you know, behind some stitches. So this is working on and it got a bath. Fun little story, Alex. We all know Alex, my cat. He threw up on it. Sure did. Threw up right here. So I took it out and I washed it in my sink with a little Dawn dish soap and water. Got it all clean and dry. Now this is all DMC floss, so nothing ran. Had it have been hand dyed, I would have thrown a Keller catcher in with it in case any of the fabric dye let loose. But this is all color fast. So I just threw it in the wash in the sink and washed it. Took it out, hung it up to dry, and gave it a quick iron. It's a little wrinkly now because I've been working on it, but gave it a quick iron to make sure everything was set. Perfectly fine. You can wash your cross stitch. I don't typically, but you can. So I'm working on that. And then the other project I'm working on is this. And this is called, let me get the pattern out so I can show you. This is called I Am No Bird by Modern Folk Embroidery. So that is the original of what it will look like. I'm choosing to do it with red floss just because. Um, I ordered my chart and fabric and floss all from evertote.ca link will be in the description box below as well from Caroline and um I got the fabric actually this fabric you cannot get yet she said it's not they haven't got it back in stock um it's called peanut brittle and it was part of our pre-purchase when I was at the retreat stitch north but I chose to use the fabric for this because I wanted the darker fabric. And for the pattern that we got at the retreat that I purchased, I would prefer to use a lighter fabric. So this, I'm working on the middle. The two peeps are done. This big house will take a while. And then I have some words up top. So I'll show you where I'm at. So I have finished the border all the way around i have finished the words at the bottom that just say jane Eyre, 1847 i finished these two little medallions and i'm working on this house currently then i just have this these four little medallions the two birds and the little thing here and then the verbs the words up here and then the rest of the pattern so i'm really enjoying this i make working copies of all of my stuff so that I can write on it because I'm a heavy like writer. I like to highlight and write and stuff. So I st and I'm terrible. I still have a needle hanging back here. Whatever. <laughs> That's the back of my project. I know there was some conversations around the backs of projects. And what should your back look like? Your back should look like whatever you want it to look like. Nobody should be seeing the back of your projects anyway. Unless you're like at a fair and they require it, you know. Let's do a thumbnail. Got it. So yes, this is a Q-snap. It's in here because I've been working on this. Which is really the only thing I've been working on. Cross stitch wise, I do need to catch up my calendar. Now, um, let's show you, oh, the floss that I'm using, I'm pulling stuff out of here. The floss that I am using is Leo and Roxy, and Caroline is the only seller of this. So if you want Leo and Roxy, you have to get it from Caroline. And the color I'm using is inappropriate, and it is a red, and I love it. It is very inappropriate. Oh. Here we go. Because Jane Eyre didn't like red. Because she had the original Red Room of Pain. Uh, yeah. Nothing about you, Christian Grey. If you're a Fifty Shades of Grey reader, uh, Jane Eyre had the original Red Room of Pain. But I have four left. I've gone through two skeins already. Completely gone. And I'm working on my third. So this boy is going to take a lot of floss. I bought... 
seven skeins and that should be plenty. And this is a bag, a little notions pouch that came when I went to the retreat in Canada, along with this bag. Oh, I am working on one other thing, which I need to get back to. So maybe what I should do tonight is finish the, um, work on my temperature chart and then get to working on this. So this is what I'm making here. Just a little Halloween pillow. It's a freebie that I printed off of Pinterest. But I will show you. Oh, this still has a needle attached to you. Guys, I gotta get my life together here. I am doing this on 32 count maybe 22 count questionable it's a Zweigart base it might be 18 count Ada one over two one over one I think it's 18 count Ada I hand dyed this myself um I just did some teal and then I went over it with pearl gray just to give it a bluey gray color I love the modeling and I think it just looks like a night sky. So I've just done the outside border and I need to go fill it in. But this is my um, cross stitch camp project for August. So I really need to get this done. Oops, it'll get done. Or maybe I'll save it and take it with me to London. More on that in a minute. Um, I have it in this hoop. I don't know what these hoops are, where they came from. They were given to me. Um, from somebody whose mom that passed away and I have a bunch of them and they are great love it there's no like they don't slip like the wooden ones do so I really like these and I know they still sell them just different style but this squeezes in your so you have your hoop on the outside and there's a ridge on the inside and then this metal there's a metal ring that just snaps in there and then you, it just automatically tightens because it's like spring loaded. So I'm working on this. This will be the size of it when it is complete. So that's all my cross stitching for this two week period. And mostly because I was on vacation, but I'll show you what I worked on on vacation in a minute. Um, but I also did some other dyeing because I'm trying to figure out um, this color. So I bought this piece of fabric this is, I think this is 18 count Ada as well. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby and I dyed up this dark moody gray, just a small piece, just a try out. I like dyeing fabric and getting different ideas of what I like. Here, I'll hold it still. Yeah, so this is just pearl gray, layers of pearl gray. I just do a little bit, add a little more dye, go over it, go over it until I get the depth that I want. So I did this and then I did these two and um, they were the same process, but they're two different fabrics and I'll show you how they came out differently. So this is an 18 count Ada as well. And I used Rit dye in the color Camel and tan and then I put a little gray over it just to kind of dirty it up a little bit like a pig pen or as Ellen Reed would say it looks like it was ran around in the dirt right so I love this I like the depth of color and I like the bits of gray kind of modeled through it so this is an 18 count now an 18 count Ada would be the same as a 32 count linen if I did two threads over two, which I do on the linen. It's just gonna be the different thickness and texture of the fabric that is difference between the Ada and the linen. Less, I think there's less thread in linen. Maybe there's more, just different. But this is a piece of 32 count, I think it's 32, count Belfast. And I did basically the same thing that I did on the Ada. I used tan and camel, and then I um, tossed in a little bit of light pearl gray just to give it some darkness. But I love the texture. And these this type of fabric I love, like with my I Am No Bird, I love that it's like an open 
or I like it when I use an open pattern that has a lot of negative space and then the color gets to speak for itself. So I enjoy this. I can't wait to figure out what I'm gonna stitch on these. So I have three small pieces of fabric that I dyed um, that I'll figure out something to do with. Who knows? Who knows, guys? I'm just, I'm just me, who knows? But these are the projects I try to keep them all together currently that I am working on. Now, the last thing for fat or for cross stitch is I got my August floss of the month from Evertote. This is Leo and Roxy, the exclusive Evertote floss. This just is fantastic. Look at these colors. This is just fall in an envelope to me. So this is brazen is the color. It's like a nice gold. Uh, this is yes, yam. <laughs> like a color of a yam or a sweet potato. This is common currency like a brown. Fantastic for fall. This is Pebble Beach. It's like a nice gray, which I love a good gray. And this is washed denim, which I'm not sure if you're catching, if you're catching the color, but look at that variegation in there and just the variety of colors. I love it. So these are my latest Leo and Roxy colors, which I need to start using all these colors up. Maybe I'll just figure out a project and stitch all of these. But they are just so beautiful and so fall. And I love fall. Let's see how they look all together. That would make a beautiful project. So I grabbed, I got these in the mail. Now, while I was on my little trip to uh, Myrtle Beach to visit family, I started a pair of socks. So I got this fat, uh, this yarn. I've had this for a very long time. This is Knit Picks uh, Felici. And the name of this color is Punch Bug. And you will see, I have two skeins. So if you're not a knitter or a sock knitter, it takes a approximately 50 grams of yarn to make one sock. So I need 100 grams to make two. And this is what it will knit up looking like. So this is the cuff. I start from the cuff down. So this is the cuff of the sock. And I'll, I'm doing the leg here. So eventually I'll get down to the heel and the foot. And then I start measuring my own foot to see how long to make this. Now, I like these a little looser because I tend to wear my knitted socks as like house slippers. So I cast on 72 stitches, which is usually like a man sock. Plus I have a little bit of a wider foot, so I like the extra room. I, I knit my socks on double points. And these needles are, I can't remember what they're called, so hopefully I can find one in here. And these are a size US number two. I usually get a 2.5, so I'm not sure why I have a two. But I think these are knit... Um, I can't remember what they are. They're not signature needles, I know that, but they're nice. I like a metal needle with a nice pointy tip. And so these get knit in the round. So I, now what I would do if my next step is I would start stitching on this needle and then finish that needle and then you go around to this needle and around and you just keep going around and around and you're making a tube. And these are called tube socks. Well, they will be called regular socks because I will have a heel flap, a gusset, and a turn. But for now, and I started these so that I could take them on my trip. I have a very long flight coming up in two months. And so what I decided to do, it's easier to um, knit socks once I have the cuff done. So I cast on both socks. I always knit my socks two at a time because I don't want to have like one sock syndrome where you make one sock and you never go back and do the other one. So what I'm doing is I have them started 
I've already done the cuff or the knitted portion on both. So I'll just work on the leg of each of them while I'm on vacation. It's something I can do on the airplane or I can knit in the hotel or on the subway. Um, just where, if I'm waiting around for something, it's not like cross stitch or I'm counting. Socks are super easy. Hats, socks, scarves, anything where you're just doing knit stitch is great. So I did that. And then the next project I worked on, which I'm so happy, is I got my um, Santa stocking out. So the other day I had to work at um, my part-time job at the university and I was going to be sitting in the uniform room literally all day long during a graduation to watch the uniform area and stuff. So I brought my knitting to work on and I was able to finish all of Santa's head. I don't quite know what happened over here on his hat, but he will get a pom-pom. I may, I don't know, I have to figure something out there. Maybe I'll put up something, but I think I just off a stitch. But he'll get a pom-pom. And if you could see the texture of his beard, I used some like art yarn to make it soft. And so here's, I will have to put eyes right here. And I'm going to stitch my name in the red. This is the exact stocking I had as a child that was lost in one of our moves. So I'm recreating it different colors though. And then he is here, he will be coming out of a chimney. I, if I have that, I will show you. I do have the pattern here, but I don't know if I have a picture of what the stocking should look like with me. If I don't, I will insert a picture here. I'll insert a picture. Yeah, I don't have a picture of the stocking. I just have the pattern in my bag. And all of the yarn that I'm using, I purchased at Hobby Lobby. It's just acrylic yarn. It's nice yarn, but it's acrylic. I didn't want anything wool-like that would get ruined if I had to wash it or something. And then it will get a loop and it will hang like that. So he was coming out below him will be the chimney. And then I just have to do the rest of the foot. And then on the back on the pattern is a Christmas tree, but I don't want to do anything on the back. So I'm doing the back just plain green. And then if I have leftover, I will probably knit two stockings for the boys and just do white, red, green all the way down. And then maybe like green or white, green, red all the way down and then stitch the boys' names on them. So we would have three matching stockings and I'll make theirs smaller. So I'm excited about that, that I got all of this done. Let me, you see this Betty Spaghetti hanging here? It is tedious. This is all color work. So if you see the back... You just carry your threads. This all has to be woven in. And I'll get to that point, maybe. Who's going to use it as a real stock and I might not weave it in and just leave it? I don't know. So I'm almost done with that. Once I get to the point that I'm just doing the body of the sock, it will go, oh, excuse me, it will go super fast. Then I'm not sure if I showed you this, but this is all I would have left is some fabric. I feel like I showed it, but I'm not sure. I went and got some of this fabric. It's this, this is the brand French General, made for Moda, if you're a quilter. And I wanna make some project bags for fall. And so I grabbed these two to go together. And they all come in the same, this is all from the same line. So I got a half a yard of each, and then look at this together. And this will be the top, and this will be the bottom. And then I just have some it's called tea dyed for like accent pieces, but I grabbed that. So that is everything craft related. Now back to my London. I signed up to go to Stitch in London in October. If you're going to be there, let me know. I know um, Caroline of Off the Grid Needle Art and Carrie of Leo and, Fro Ro Leo and Roxy Floss Co. are going to be there. I feel like a stalker because I'm like, girl, I'm going to. If you're going, I'm going. That's how it is. So I am leaving here on a Wednesday. I'm getting there on a Thursday. It's an overnight flight. I will be at the retreat Friday, Saturday, part day, Sunday. And then I'm changing hotels. And I'm going to be in Kensington on rest of the day Sunday, all day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, London area. And then I'm coming home on Thursday to give myself a couple days to just get back to life. 
So if you're in the London area and you have things I should do or see, let me know because I will be in the London area. <laughs> I'm so excited. I am super excited to go to this retreat. And then next year I will be at Stitch North in Canada. That is also through Evertote. I told you I'm a stalker. Don't tell Caroline, she'll be afraid of me. Um, I'm going to her retreat in November, April of next year, April, May, the second weekend for Stitch North. And then we're going to be at the second weekend of the Jacob Palooza, which will be in London, Ontario in October of next year. So I have three retreats coming up. All right, everybody, that is it. I hope you enjoy and yeah, come join our Facebook group. We're having fun over there. Talk to you later. Bye.